Hello everyone, I'm really pleased to be on here with you guys. I took a few days off from videos just because I was going through pretty enormous changes within my throat chakra. <laughs> you know, the kundalini process can be quite intense. It has been for me since 2011, and it works through your entire chakra system. It pierces the different energy points, and how I see it, and I've always referred to the kundalini as an alien force that starts to merge your consciousness with other extraterrestrial beings, consciousnesses, and so you go through intense rebundling and reconfiguration within your DNA structure. And so I've had different themes, like the first few years it was my third eye and it would constantly snap, crackle, pop, and I would have to get out of the, the Kundalini's way to allow for it to move through the recesses of my mind and to work through the hemispheres of my brain. And I've done a lot of stomach work and a lot of heart work and uh, my feet, your feet have tons of chakras in them. So the last year that was the main theme for me is squeezing my feet and doing all kinds of weird things to open up the chakras. And uh, uh, this last month was my throat. So... I had days where I couldn't even speak because my throat was so blocked from this higher consciousness coming in. It really does congest your throat chakra field. And uh, I never really understood why channelers had to change their voices when they speak and change the tones, but I finally get it. It's because it's a very intense process of modulating your frequencies through the communication with these other consciousness beings. So I'm really pleased to be on here today, and I've decided to do a forecast for January. I wasn't sure I was going to do one because I was going through my throat stuff. And, you know, sometimes it can be a little discouraging because you're like, ah, my God, what's going on with my body and what's going on with my throat? And you always get the clear uh, guidance from within that all is well, everything is on track, and it's just a matter of um, rewiring the entire chakra system so that you can transmit those codes when you speak and that's a big part of why uh, we have to work on our throats and communication and all of this stuff so uh, the first thing I want to start off with is that this is going to be the year of no excuses we cannot make excuses anymore all right the universe is so generous in terms of affording us copious options as to how we can really start to usher in that higher consciousness, the abundance, the vitality, the joy, the health, the wealth, all of it. And there are infinite options as to how we can start to um, raise our state of beingness, increase our frequency, so that we can start to merge into those higher timelines. We can truly, we have, there is no room for excuses anymore, all right? Um, you know, just yesterday I took a shower and I spent about seven minutes talking to my feet and, uh, you know, washing them really well and, um, loving on them and thanking them for, for getting me from point A to point B in my everyday life. And, you know, this is just one example of millions upon millions of examples of things that we can do and implement in our everyday reality to start to you know, bring more consciousness to things. And I promise you that when you speak to your feet or when you tend to, you know, your anything, you can tend to people, you can tend to your food and give gratitude for your food. Anything that you do, it gets transmitted into the cosmos. It, gets, it sends out a signal and the field of existence is listening to everything that you are saying, to every emotion that you are emitting, to every frequency that you are pulsing out. It listens to everything. So as I was speaking to my feet, um, I could hear my cells responding. Like, thank you for giving us love. Thank you for firing us up. Thank you for bringing awareness to this. You know, what if I told you that the Pleiades, the Pleiades or the Pleiades were in your feet? What if I told you that Arcturus was in your, uh, in your throat? You know what I mean? So if we can start to communicate with the cells in our body by giving love to ourselves, by infusing love within every, every molecule of your being, the, the entire field listens to that and responds accordingly. So 
it doesn't have to be that you wash your feet. It could be that you go for a walk and you give thanks for the air that you get to breathe in. It could be that you give thanks for the food that is on the table. There are copious ways, copious methods that you can start to utilize to lift yourself into a higher state of beingness. So this year we have no excuses. If you feel like you're deflated in your energy, please note that there is some area in your life where you are not giving enough, whether it's that you're giving to people or giving to yourself, all right? But one thing that the nine were showing me today is that we cannot make excuses this year because everything that you, can, that you do with intention, right? Anything that you do intentionally ripples throughout the entire universe. It echoes, it sends a signal. Let me turn this off real quick. So that's what's happening. So January, <laughs> January, there's gonna be a bleed over period from 2018. So it's not just gonna be a reset button and let's start anew. It can be that and it should be that, you know, whatever you deem suitable for where you are. But what I was being shown is that there are loose ends that need to be tied up. A decision that you have made that is gonna finally be decided upon. There's gonna be um, some sort of a resolution that happens with friends or people in your life or a relationship that you're gonna to decide to commit yourself to or a person that is interested in you that you haven't shown interest to and then you're gonna open up your heart and finally decide that you're gonna jump on board. Uh, there can be so many different uh, things going on in the beginning of January. So in the next two, three weeks, it's not just gonna be glitters and gold and rainbows and unicorns. There's gonna be a lot of um, internal decision making. There's going to be a lot of reflection, a lot of contemplation, and uh, try to be good to yourself. All right. I'm seeing that people have a tendency, the collective has a tendency, especially when we're operating unconsciously, to try to overcompensate in the new year. So if you put on a few pounds last year and you're going to force yourself to the gym every day because you know, make sure that your intention is clear. If you're going there to punish yourself for not having lost the weight last year, then your intention and your drive is not positive. It's not going to help you. All right. So the first thing is the resolutions, the new year resolution. I would probably dissuade you from making those. And the reason for that is that 5D, New Earth, is a brand new way of existing. It's not about strict regimens. It's not about all of this stuff that we need to follow, all right? The third dimensional human needed to follow a set of rules because it couldn't really, it didn't really trust the flow, the empowered flow. It didn't really trust, um, it wasn't really loving towards itself. It had a lot of limiting beliefs. It had a lot of, um, self uh, self uh, self critical ideas self reprimanding um, all of this stuff so the third dimensional human was filled with dense energy and so in order to remain afloat it needed a lot of structure and I'm not by any means suggesting that structure isn't valuable it is absolutely important to have structure in your life and to meditate every day to keep that frequency high so that you can see life from the overview. But as a whole, as a whole, the fifth dimensional reality is a vibrational one in nature. It's not about following or adhering to old ways. It actually goes against all of that, all right? Um, it wants to be the parent that holds you. It wants, whenever you're, 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 you're blaming yourself for eating a cake, no, it wants to hold you in love and say all is well. Also, I want everyone to understand this, and this is just coming through now. Most people gain weight because of their thoughts, the dialogues that they have inside of their minds. It's not because of what they eat. Yes, it's partly that. If you have five donuts a day, you're operating with an imbalance, and that imbalance is going to manifest because all energies have to manifest. But as a whole, when you are aligned, when you're functioning within a space of equilibrium in your life, 
you won't gain weight. All right? You're going to listen to your soul. We're going to call it the soul diet. Listen to your soul. Speak to your soul. Speak to your body. Your body is very smart. I call it the smart body. Speak to your body. Ask it what it needs. Are you hungry right now? No, I am not. And then you don't eat. Are you hungry right now? Yes, I am. And I want a donut for some reason. And you have that donut and you infuse it with love. The reason why a lot of people gain weight is because they're still blaming themselves for their unconscious creations. And then they try to overcompensate by beating themselves up at the gym. Not healthy, not advisable by any means. So I would say resolutions are completely fine. At the end of the day, you are indeed the maker of your reality and it is up to you to see how, um, to see how you want to experience this life and this month. I'm not one to make New Year's resolutions just because this is a, a, a journey of uh, continuity. It's never just, all right, that's it, you know? Things take time. Things happen in their own time sometimes. <laughs> so I would say be really good to yourself this month. And for the first two, three weeks, try to steer clear of uh, participating in the game of resolutions. Because while a lot of people are going to be excited to implement these new methods, to implement these new regime uh, regimens and all of this, there, that can also be mixed in with, how can I say this? It can be, um, it can be blended with a little bit of that dark energy of the, I did not lose weight last year, so I'm going to go extra hard right now, which is that self-deprecating energy. So I would probably just retreat to your own little bubble the first two weeks because there's going to be a lot of high energy, but remember high energy can be a blend of adrenaline, which is associated to stress or wanting to overachieve. And the fifth dimensional existence is not about that at all. It is, not a, it is about living from moment to moment. The moment right here creates another moment and then we tend to chain them together and think that that's, that was our, our day when in fact it was just a moment based upon what where you were vibrating in your field. So the message I'm getting for all of you is uh, don't, don't jump onto the bandwagon of regimens and all these resolutions. If you want to and it excites you and you feel good about it, then by all means go for it. But if this is something that you're responding to unconsciously, meaning that you're picking up on the energy from the entire collective right now, and you're just going to jump on board because everyone else is doing it, then I would probably advise you against that, advise you not to do that. So January, uh, the first two weeks especially, is going to be a time for decision making and for really choosing and then committing. I call that the double C. You choose and then you commit because a lot of us tend to choose and then we start to backpedal and we, we question whether or not we made the right decision. I dealt with that too this month, or I should say uh, the last few weeks of December. You choose and then you commit to it. Commit to it. If you had clarity and then you chose it and then you committed to it, then that's that would be the magical three C's. And I just came up with that now, but I like that. If you had clarity when you made your decision, when you made your choice, and then you committed to it, then you're fine. Don't question yourself, all right? Um, January is a year of uh, personal power. It's a year of liberation, all right? 2019 as a whole is going to be a year of liberation. And what this means is that by living in your empowered flow, by living in the state of um, sovereignty, in, in, in the state of knowing who you are, the universe is going to bring to you more of what you desire, all right? So this is going to sound a little weird, but please bear with me as I share this download I received from the nine. For the first two weeks, I want you to imagine that every person that you come into contact with or every person that comes into contact with you is a character in your movie. 
And everything that is shared is part of a script. And the script isn't even real. It's just a movie. Okay? What this is going to enable you to do is to see or to be in complete control of what you agree to, right, at a soul level, and what you don't agree to. So if you're speaking to me and you're saying, Phil, I don't like the weather today, I'm going to treat you like a character in my movie that I created. And I know this sounds weird, but just, all right, just follow me for a minute. And I'm going to take a second and pause and ask myself, do I agree with you? No. And I may say the weather is actually beautiful and I'm sorry you feel that way. That person may feel reactive, but guess what? You just took your power back. And let's not focus on taking our power back. Let's start this year with this idea that we're already fully empowered and that we think twice before we nod our heads or before we make agreements within the ethers, within the, the invisible planes. So be aware of everything that you do. All right. And remember something. No one owes you anything and you don't owe anything to anyone. You don't owe them a nod. You don't owe them a yes, I agree with you or you don't owe anyone anything. And being in this empowered state is going to allow you to be a prime manifester of your reality. And I may actually do a, uh, a webinar on this. Actually, this is just coming to me now, a full on extended webinar about this. So moving on. First two, three weeks, uh, get on the sideline, all right? Don't, don't engage too much because people are going to be on that high, and that high can be a deceptive energy sometimes, which is why so many people get gym memberships, and then uh, one month later, they, they retract and they don't want to go anymore. So hmm. what does that tell you? It tells you that they were operating from a space of overcompensation. They were trying to make up for lost time or make up for... You know, that donut that they ate, that, that extra or additional donut they ate the year before, and that doesn't serve anyone. All right? This is about bringing ourselves back into a space of self-love and no longer blaming or shaming ourselves for our creations. All right? Don't ever blame yourself for what you create. It's part of the experience. Believe me, being God is very boring. <laughs> That's why we're constantly going to keep going to different planetary systems and and, and, and going back to Arcturus and maybe having a life there and then going over to, to the ocean life, uh, just being God can be very boring. And that's why God needed to experience itself through us. So don't blame yourself for what you create. It's all part of this beautiful, beautiful game because this is a game. So the first two weeks, try to treat people like a character in your video game or in your movie. And... It's a great way to kind of start afresh and, um, you know, operate from this empowered state from the get-go. Uh, I'm finding that this year there's going to be a lot of emotional outbursting, a lot of uh, negativity that's going to pop out of the ground. And that's because so many of you, so many of us, are accelerating in our frequency. We are moving so, 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 so fast, so fast, that anyone who resists the change is going to suffer greatly. Because one thing that's coming to me now is there are certain events that are predetermined. There are certain predestinations, all right? And one of them is that we're going to have to evolve as a species. You cannot avoid that. This is inevitable. So if we have to evolve as a species, guess what? You either have a choice to kick and scream and be in diametric op opposition to what's going to happen, or you have your next option is to lean into it and fully embrace the transformation. So there's going to be a bifurcation of the two worlds this year, a splitting of the two worlds. And these two worlds are going to be the people who have been really elevating their consciousness and then the other group who has been uh, kicking and screaming and throwing tantrums and people who don't want to look at themselves, which is a valid choice. However, the predestination of planet Earth is that Gaia, Mother Gaia, is ascending. 
whether humans want to be a part of that or not, they're going to have to acclimate in some way, shape, or form. They're either going to get on board. Shaman, my friend Shaman Dre calls it the lit train. They're either going to have to get on the lit train. I, I would call it a, 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 uh, uh, a UFO of sorts. Either get on the UFO or step down. And the people who choose to kick and scream and resist the change, they can still have a great life. However, they're going to be on a different uh, version of planet Earth, if you will. And again, there is validity to that choice because we never know what people are dealing with. They could have deep-seated traumas that they're not wanting to face yet. They can have deep uh, imprints from other lifetimes. Okay? So the other message I'm getting for you guys is... Oh, this is really good. All right? So the other message I'm getting for you guys is that... Um, most of the emotions that we're going to be experiencing, especially the negative ones, anxiety, stress, whenever you have days where you're, you know, you're feeling that negativity, in the older format of reality, when we were awakening and we were healing ourselves, a lot of those energies pointed to a past timeline or to a past lifetime and or to our childhood, whatever. It usually looped back to some sort of a past event. What I'm getting now is if you feel anxiety, if you feel stress, if you feel excitement, anything, it could be positive too. This is now going to be associated to a future timeline. In linear, I'm speaking in linear terms because we know there is no, and this is a multi-dimensional uh, universe and um, it's uh, multi-locational and there is no such thing as linear, but there is from the third dimensional viewpoint. So from the third dimensional viewpoint, there is such a thing as a past and a future. So uh, just to clarify, if you have anxiety, excitement, stress, anything, rather than looking back, sit there and communicate with this future timeline or this impending event. It's an event that's going to be happening. And the reason why you're feeling that anxiety is because your body is receiving an activation and doesn't know how to respond, so it's going to grab on to what it knows. That's what the ego does. And it says, oh my God, I'm in trouble. Oh my God, it's doom and gloom, and the worst case scenario is going to happen, which is completely removed from the truth. What's happening in actuality is that your body is gaining a transmission from a future energy that is starting to make its way to you, and by the time it gets to you, your body would have acclimated to that frequency, and you guys would have been a perfect match for each other. All right, let me think of an example. If, say, you're supposed to meet the love of your life in April, but if you met them right now, all of the etheric imprints or karmic residue that you're carrying would bleed into that relationship, which would probably, you know, taint the dynamic. The universe is going to afford you this time lag or this time period to sit with that energy. And you don't really necessarily have to know the energy. I actually love to read read it, like really get into the specifics. So I, if I'm feeling anything, just any emotion, I can now sit there and I know exactly where it's originating from. I know. Is it from the past, from the future? And I have found that it's usually from the future lately. And then what I'll do is I'll integrate it. So I'll sit with the emotion and I'll integrate it. Just like if you're feeling a fear, but you're integrating that energy as opposed to acting on the fear. There's a distinction there. You understand? Between the two. So sit with the energy and know that your future timelines and all incoming events are now interacting with your field to uh, adjust your energetics so that once this union happens of you and this event and this event can be anything from a lover to an opportunity to a, a trip that you might go on or to something that you you're not even expecting of anything that you are receiving in terms of your emotions is a rearrangement that's taking place within your cellular structure and all the cells in your body are <laughs> interacting amongst each other I think of the cells as fairies, and I, I haven't heard of any spiritual teacher 
talk to them or describe them as fairies, but I think of the cells in my body as little fairies. And when you give them love, when you give them attention, when you listen to your emotions, those fairies light up and they dance. You know, fairies are very playful and very joyous and they start to work in your favor. You know, they interact with other uh, galactic beings and all of this and, and you start to, to usher in those higher timelines. So it's really important to understand that the year uh, of 2019, there are no excuses, no excuses. Going back to speaking to your body, give love to yourself, give love to yourself. Get in that shower and speak to your feet and say, and wash them really well and love on them and say, thank you so much. I love you for taking me from point A to point B every day. I love you. And, and you can spend five, seven, eight minutes on your feet alone giving them love, all right? There are, there are infinite amounts of ways that um, we can start to revitalize the cells in our body and communicate with our field. We have to communicate to the field. It's a field. It's an interconnected web of consciousness. And we cannot make excuses anymore. All right, it can be something as simple as tipping someone $10 just because you want to. And that sends out a signal that is then reciprocated, right? So this is the year of no excuses. The nine have emphasized the humans cannot make excuses anymore. We are starting to integrate ourselves as a galactic society into a galactic society. And we need to really own it. We have to own our power. We have to extend gratitude, extend appreciation, operate consciously as deliberate creators of our lives. Okay? Um, the other thing that I got for you guys um, is catch yourself when you're about to ask someone something. Like, hey, what do you think my purpose should be? What do you think I should be doing? Catch yourself because that's a form of giving your power away. All right, and if we're gonna reset this year, let's reset it as I'm I'm a fully embodied soul. I don't need to take my power back, but I don't give it away. I'll repeat, I don't need to take my power back, but I don't give it away. All right, don't give your power away. Treat everyone who's in your immediate reality as someone who's a character that you invented. You invented them, you created them, you designed them. And yes, at first it's gonna feel a little superficial because they're just characters in your script. But try it, try it and get back to me, all right? I did this many years ago. I treated everyone like a character in my game for I would say a month or two. And this really was revealing in terms of where I once gave my power away or where I still have uh, an inclination to give my power away. It was really mind opening. So I suggest that you try this. January is going to be a month filled with... I, I mean, here's the thing. I wish I could tell you guys that it's going to be all unicorns and rainbows. It's just not. The first two weeks are going to be a little bumpy, right? They're going to be a little bumpy. But if you remain clear of if you steer clear of all that dramatic energy that people have that frantic like yeah i'm gonna go get it this year i'm gonna get my vision board if you just trust that you're already there you're a fifth dimensional being all right and and you don't need to do all that stuff you're already there then that's going to allow you to i don't want to say bypass but you're gonna the storm is gonna pass and you won't even realize that there was a storm but a lot of people are going to have high emotional spikes the first couple of weeks of January. And then everything's going to start to level out. And I keep being shown that 2019 is an upward spiral. It's the year of liberation. It's the year where I feel like 2018 was one of the toughest years yet. All right. You lost a lot of friends. You had to have go through a lot of dark nights of the soul where you were alone, cooped up in your apartment, you know, reflecting on your friendships, reflecting on what you want. Uh, it became also very clear to you as to who gave you love conditionally. 
as opposed to unconditionally. So it was a very big year for us. 2018 was a year of self-reflection, of bottling up those desires because it wasn't quite time yet. You know, you've, you've been wanting to launch a business, you've been wanting to fall in love, you've been wanting to travel, but for some reason it wasn't quite time. And that's because there's beauty and magic in withholding that energy sometimes, right? That way, it's like you, you fill up and then you eventually implode into your potential. You implode. That's how my kundalini happened. You know, I was a celibate for a few years before I had my kundalini awakening. And to this day, I think that, that I can attribute my kundalini awakening to being celibate for a while. Now, sex is a beautiful expression, sex expression. But what I'm saying is um, when you withhold desire sometimes because you're honoring what's true for you, all right, then eventually it pops out of the ground. It, it just, this beautiful force emerges from the depth of your soul and sets into your reality, into your physical reality. So 2018, we became very spiritual because we, we sat with ourselves a lot in the dark room. We got to sue over some of the events that took place. And we also had to suppress a lot of our emotions or desires because, again, it wasn't quite time to launch your business. And remember something. The universe is always working on your behalf. The universe is always going to launch you when it deems it appropriate. Some people launch themselves too soon and they end up failing because they were too ahead of the curve. And you're one of those people, okay? They were too ahead of the curve. And they wouldn't have been understood or they weren't understood when they launched this magnificent and brilliant idea that they had. So there's a timing for everything. And the universe is patting you on the back. Your spirit guides, your angels are patting you on the back for having exercised so much patience. And 2019 is the year where you're going to get to experience in physical form your liberation. So think of 2018 as it was your year where you... Um, liber liberated yourself from a consciousness standpoint, meaning you let go of attachments that were toxic or that were not serving you uh, in the greatest capacity. Uh, and then 2019, everything that you created within yourself energetically is now going to settle in as just your life. So... Um, and you're, you're going to finally understand why you have to be patient, why uh, you were frustrated in 2018, but how there was an ingenious way that the, the universe was orchestrating this whole thing. All right? Never doubt the power of God or source. Never doubt the power of God or source because it knows exactly what it's doing and it knows you better than the back of its hand. Believe me, it knows you better than the back of its hand. So never ever question what it is that Source is doing for you, with you, through you, okay? And what it's about to do to you. <laughs> so never doubt that because you are supported and backed by so many investors in the galactic fields. They've invested in you because you are so pristine in your energy. You are so needed here. You are an integral part of this evolutionary process. So you have investors, <laughs> your oversoul, your galactic family, your star family in the Pleiades, in, in Arcturus, in Orion, wherever, wherever it is that you, you, you resonate. They're your investors. They believed in you. So, but, but because they've invested in you, they're not going to just say, okay, go do launch your business. They may say, wait five months so that it can be more successful when you launch it. So I know I'm going all over this place with this video, but um, stand in your power. You know, sit on your throne. Sit in your power. And don't give it away anymore. Don't give it away. And then the other thing is give gratitude Love on your feet, love on yourself, love on your, the people in your life. All right, find where it is that you're still holding back, where you're still functioning from a space of lack. Find those areas 
and correct them. Everything is a correction. You know, our divine organic human is perfect. It is perfect. And we are finding our way back to our perfection, to the perfection that we are. But in the meantime, we have to make little course corrections along the way. Oh, I hurt this person. Let me hold myself accountable. Oh, I'm, I'm not being uh, kind to myself. I'm not uh, giving myself the proper nutrition or I'm not do it can be anything. Make the correction. The, the, the field is listening. The field hears you. Everything you do, every step you take, all right, is like a, a, a drum beat. It's like the drum, right? And the universe hears it and will respond accordingly. The vibration that you offer is always going to come back to you. It's like a boomerang. It's always going to be returned. Always. So if you're unhappy, find, try to locate that area of your life that you're not happy in. Or who you're not happy with. Who may not be a match to you anymore. Start clean. Wipe the slate clean this year. All right? And please cut yourself some slack. Don't do the overcompensation game. Oh, I gained five pounds in 2018. Now I'm going to lose it all. No. Love yourself and say, I'm perfect right here, right now. I needed to put on those five pounds because maybe my body required it for an activation that was coming through. And those five pounds were exactly what I needed. Don't play the game of the rat race. Don't, 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 don't participate in that. Please do not. So, wow, I've gone 36 minutes already. I think that's enough for now. So I love you guys so much. And thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. And um, for being patient with me. Because I'm human too. And I'm going through my own changes in my body. As I learn how to channel these energies and, and so forth. It's a lot. But I'm so happy to do it, and it, and it excites me. All right? Much love.